Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in this episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to be taking a look at the many different ways that you can convert your image to black and white in Lightroom. And although I'm recording this in Lightroom, many of these same techniques also work if you're using the bridge to Adobe Camera Raw to Photoshop workflow. All right, let's start off here by looking over in the preset area. You'll notice that Lightroom 4 has several presets for black and white. It's got the Lightroom Black and White Presets folder where you've got a variety of different options and we can just hover the mouse over any of these options and we'll get a preview of what that black and white preset would look like in the navigator panel above. So depending on your image, any one of these presets might be a good starting point, in which case all you need to do is click on it in order to apply it. If you don't want it applied, just Command Z or Control Z will undo that. There's also a variety of different black and white filter presets. If we toggle down that arrow, we can see there's a blue filter, blue high contrast, green, infrared, orange, red, red high contrast, and yellow. So obviously some of these will work better for portraits and some of them will work better for landscapes. And again, you can simply click on any of these in order to apply it. If you don't like it, Command or Control Z will undo that. But let's take a look at how we might use some of the panels in order to create our own black and white conversions. In the basic panel, there are two different ways to convert your image to black and white. There's the black and white treatment across the top, and if we scroll down, there's also the saturation slider. Now, the saturation slider, if we just move that to the left, certainly it does desaturate the image, but it doesn't give us a lot of control. So to reset it, I'll just double click saturation. Instead, I'm going to use the black and white treatment. But what happens next is dependent on a preference. So let's go under the Lightroom menu and come down to our preferences. Of course, if you were on Windows, you'd go to the Edit menu and choose Preferences. And I'm going to click on the Presets tab. You'll notice that there's an option here to apply Auto Mix when first converting to black and white. If we uncheck this and then close the preference, if we convert to black and white, and then we scroll down to our black and white panel here, you'll notice that all of the options, all of the sliders are set to zero. If you use this option, Photoshop is simply converting to black and white, but it's not analyzing the image. I think we'll get a better result if we actually turn that preference on. So again, I'll use Command Z to undo that, and I'll use the keyboard shortcut Command Comma in order to bring back up the preferences. Of course, on Windows, that would be Control Comma. And I'll turn on the Apply Auto Mix when first converting to black and white. Now, if I scroll back up to the basic panel and click on black and white, or if I tap the V key, V as in black and white, it will convert this, but it's going to convert this image differently than any other image out there. And if we look at the black and white panel, we can see that this image has been converted to black and white with these options. Now, if you don't want to turn this preference on to auto convert, you could leave it off and then just click on the auto button in order to convert your image. Or you can do what I've done, if we scroll up here and we look at some of the presets that I've created, I have a default black and white mix where Lightroom simply converts to black and white, but all the sliders are set to zero. And then I have another preset to do the auto black and white mix. And this preset here was created by clicking on the plus icon and then turning on the auto black and white mix. So it's really easy to create this preset yourself. You'd simply give the preset a name and then put it in whatever folder you want. Since I already have one, I'll click cancel. Now, if I was going to be working with a lot of portraits, I might want to bias this black and white conversion because I might want to get a little bit more separation between the skin tones and the background. In order to do this, I might take, for instance, the yellow slider and the orange slider and the red slider and move them up just a wee bit. That kind of lightens the skin and gives it maybe more of a translucent look. 
Then the green, aqua, and blue, I typically would not move to the right. If anything, I might make them a little bit darker, which helps in this image because it changed the green here of the background so that I have more contrast. And then the purple slider, I'm gonna watch what it does. There's a slight change in her lip, so whether I want that lip color darker or lighter, I'll use the purple slider. And same with the magenta slider. I think for my default settings, I might increase both purple and magenta a little bit, as well as the red, orange, and yellow, and then I could click the plus icon in order to create a new preset. And we can see here, this is actually the third preset that I've created. So when I created the preset, I didn't make quite as drastic of move with the sliders, but I made a good starting point when working with portraits. And of course, once I apply this preset, I can always come in and make subtle changes. Now, there's another way to convert your images to grayscale, and that is not using the black and white option, but by decreasing the saturation using HSL. So let me just move back here. I'm gonna use a snapshot to go back to the color image after I cropped it. And then I'm going to use the saturation sliders in order to remove the saturation. I'm not gonna do it in the basic panel, but I'm gonna go in and specifically decrease the saturation to minus 100 for each one of these color ranges. There's another advantage to doing it this way, and that is Lightroom doesn't really consider the image to be black and white. So if I wanted to do some selective coloring, for example, maybe I wanted um, her jewelry to still be in color, if you use this method to desaturate, I can always choose maybe my adjustment brush and set it with a positive saturation. And then I can go in and actually paint in areas to get a selective color effect. This is not possible if you tap the V key to take your image to black and white. You can no longer paint with saturation. All right, let's undo that though. And let's go back to the HSL panel, because we're not just desaturating everything here, we'll also want to go over to the luminance. And in the luminance, here's where we can go in and fine tune and make adjustments to our image, just like we could or we did a moment ago in black and white. So I can make these same changes here using this method, and it gives me the flexibility of also being able to selectively color the image or add back in color to a specific range. I mean, if I wanted a specific color range, that would be as easy as going to saturation and just increasing some of these ranges to bring back a little bit of color in the image. All right, but I don't wanna do that. I wanna go ahead and leave those to negative 100. And in fact, you can see that I've got two presets. This first preset brings down the saturation to 100%, and the next preset here that I've got saved brings down the saturation to 100%, but it lightens up the luminance in the red, orange, yellow, and purple channels. So here's the default desaturated, and here's with lightning in those other channels. So again, I've created presets, which are a good starting point for converting my images to black and white. Let's move back to the saturation one here. This one you'll notice is minus 100, and if we go to luminance, they're all aligned at zero. I just wanna mention, you know, don't forget that there is the targeted adjustment tool with the HSL panel. So I don't have to move the sliders independently. I can activate the tool by clicking on it and then simply click and drag in the image area in order to lighten by dragging up or I can click and drag down in order to darken. So you don't have to move the sliders, I just wanted to make sure you knew what was happening when we were actually lightening or darkening different color ranges. Of course, there are additional ways that you can convert your images or customize the conversion to black and white. If we go ahead and return back to the basic panel, you can always use the temperature and the tint sliders in order to customize your conversion. You can also scoot down to the tone panel. Now here, we'll need to make sure that we're working with the composite, the RGB channel. If you just go into, say, the red channel and you make an adjustment, you're going to introduce a color shift 
So this is a great way to tone your images, but it's not a great way to create a black and white conversion. So let's just reset that by dragging off the point. If I return to the RGB composite, now we could go in and certainly I could make a change, maybe adding a little bit of contrast by adding an S curve. And finally, if we scroll all the way down to camera calibration, you'll notice that I can change not only the tint in my shadows, which is changing the way the image is being converted to grayscale, I can also push the hue of either this red color here towards more pink or orange, I can change my green primary, and I can change the blue primary here, and I can either increase or decrease the saturation, which is controlling the way the image gets converted. Personally, I find myself using HSL more often because one, it's got the targeted adjustment tool that I can use, and also there are more color ranges, there's more sliders to choose from, meaning that a small move in HSL is going to be much, much more delicate than maybe a slight move here in the camera calibration panel. Important thing is, once you're done and you've got some good starting points, be sure to save those as presets so that you don't have to go into every single image every time with the custom conversion. I'm just gonna move to this other image really quickly to show you some of the presets. There's the default, there's the auto black and white mix, Here's my portrait one, which happens to work very well on this landscape because it's increasing or lightening the red, orange, and yellows. Here we have just a desaturation, and here again, we're lightening those yellows, but not as much. And of course, we can come in here and make changes. But let's say I like this preset the best as a starting point. So we'll select that, go into black and white, grab our targeted adjustment tool, and maybe just lighten this lighthouse up a little bit more. Don't forget, I've been making global adjustments. We can always come into the adjustment brush. Let's say for example, because this image, if we tap the Y key and we look at before and after, this image, the sky really doesn't have any color to it, so there's no like blue color range that I can darken or lighten, but what I can do is I can load up my adjustment brush, not with saturation, but instead maybe with a negative highlight or a negative exposure, I'll make sure that the auto mask is turned on, and then I'll click and drag in the sky area. I'll come around the fence here and the wires. Because the auto mask option is on, it's only affecting the sky there. Of course, I can come and click in between these. Of course, if I was doing this, I would wanna probably zoom in, but for now, this should be good. And then we can go ahead and, if that adjustment isn't big enough, Let's go ahead and take the exposure down a little bit more, maybe add a little bit of contrast, and maybe decrease the highlights. So as you can see, Lightroom really has a lot of tools to help you convert your images to black and white, not only globally, but also selectively. My name's Julianne Cost, thanks for watching.